All right. right, I guess we'll get started. It's now 7.01. Call the meeting to order. Um, is there public comment for items not on the agenda? Okay, any changes or additions to the agenda? Okay. So the, um, I don't know if Alfred's coming on or not, but um, he sent out some information regarding the purchase of a used truck. And mm -hmm. we have our usual list of questions, which I think he's accustomed to now. And I'm wondering if it makes sense to delegate working on that issue with Alfred to John and or Rick or both and to come back to the board with a recommendation to save time. What do you guys think of that? Rick, John? Uh, I'm okay with it. I'm brand new on this, you know, so I don't know what you've kind of historically asked. I definitely want John or somebody in the room. Yeah, uh -huh. that's fine. We, do it. Mm -hmm. we can do it together. Yeah. Yeah, that think, sounds good. Yeah, I think the turnaround time is pretty quick. So rather than get bogged down here at a meeting, with talking about this, that, and the other thing about a truck. Um, and John's had experience with this with trucks and used equipment and stuff with us before. So um, maybe you guys could, can we have it in the minutes that we're, or maybe I'll make a motion to delegate the. Um, you don't need a motion, Denise. It's just, just what we you do. Don't? Okay. So anyways, I think that if we can have the minutes reflect that we're delegating the review and evaluation of the truck with Alfred that he's proposing. And I think the turnaround time is quick because the last time it something got sold before we could even act on it. Yeah. Would... Well, I guess the we... one question I would have just from a financial point of view is, um, if there's a down payment that's made to hold it, can we get a refund of our down payment if we decide against it? And I don't know how much a down payment would even be, but that would be one question I would want you guys to look at. Mm -hmm. This truck wasn't going to be available until later summer right as well from as i recall from his conversation wasn't that the case That's yeah from correct. charlie boys yeah yeah so i don't i don't know the background on this did i miss an email i, I know that we were looking at one here but yeah so, Aaron, I'm, is it trade from another town or yeah is a trade in from another town alfred sent a bunch of information yeah okay. that i forwarded to the board Okay. Yeah, he's ta he talked about, you know, he talked to the operator, operated it for it since it was new and said he, you know, that they've got all the records for it. He said it's been, I mean, the guy raves about the truck itself. So, and so mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know beyond that, you know, we, we should talk to Alfred, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you guys understand the ins and outs of trucks better than, oh, okay. than, I, than I certainly do. All those documents are in the folder for tonight's meeting as well, John. Yeah, I'm seeing are, it on yeah. the email now. I'm seeing it yeah. now. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Anybody basically, else? Basically, we got to wait for the town it's coming from for them to receive their new truck before this one's available for purchase. Right. But there was discussion about an option of being able to reserve it and have first dibs on it if we were willing to put in a down payment. But that brings us to Denise's question, which is a good one. Refundable. Yeah. Boy, that's a lot of dough for 2014 with 75,000 miles on it, man. Wow. How much is it, John? $77,000. Wow. 75,000 miles is pretty high mileage for a 77,000. That's why I was wondering, how was it used? It's a town plow truck? That's in a lot of miles. Vermont. All right. Well, well, Rick and I will look at it. Okay. It's a lot of dough. For an old yeah, truck. and then I think the idea is that would replace the spare that we have. I think that's the, the plan. The irony for me is 
you know, and I know we're not supposed to get into this deep here, but the irony for me is our cycle is seven years. That truck, and I've been told, it doesn't matter about mileage. It has to do with years and pushing and loading. And that truck is seven years old. Yeah. So right, we're buying a truck that's seven years old when we're trying to get rid of trucks that are, I don't understand the magic, the, the logic on this. Well, I guess that would be stuff that you could talk to. Yeah. You and Rick would talk with Alfred about. This is from the world of Bizarro to me. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. And then let me know um, if you're ready for it to be on the agenda for May 10th. Yep. Okay. All okay. right. Great. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, now we're a few minutes early. I thought this would take longer, but it didn't. So, um, Cindy, do you and do you guys know if there's any other people going to join about the update from Wilson? And have you heard from anybody? I don't know. I haven't heard from anybody. Okay. Um, we may have to back up a little bit if other people join in, but um, Wilson, you wanna give us, an, and I guess John too, an update on the situation in Maple Corner? With the horses? With the horses. Yeah, um, two of the horses are at John Brabant's and two of them have vanished. We don't know where they've gone to, but we think uh, Elizabeth's father has gotten rid of them and given them back to the people that sold it. So the horses to her. Could you um, talk a little closer to the mic, actually, Wilson? No, so. What's that? Could you talk a little, just talk a little closer to the microphone, if you could, yep. so we can hear you better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm um, sorry, go ahead. Two of the horses have gone, and two of the horses are at John Brabant's. Um, her father has agreed to pay damages uh, and boarding, so we'll see how that works out. Um, yeah, um, my, my understanding is, uh, I have two mares at our place. Uh, the, I got the two well-behaved horses. Um, no, one's a kicker. Eight. What's that? One is a kicker. Uh, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> My wife's a kicker some days. For good reason. <laughs> For good reason. Okay. Um, but um, the the gelding is up at Terry Foster's, the fourth one, I'm not sure where it is. It might be up at Terry Foster's in Hardwick as well. Oh, and Hardwick. By the way, is a distant, distant relative to the Fosters of the Foster Farm on uh, Spockman's Farm. So anyway, um, uh, the they're going to try to get rid of the gelding. Terry's going to try to get rid of that gelding. And, um, and the other horse might be going back, as Wilson said, to wherever it came from. Now, a gelding is, tell me what a gelding is. It's not a stallion. It's fixed. It's it's the fixed. guy who had his things cut off. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. You can tell they're a gelding. They talk They talk higher. Well, okay, gotcha. A horse steer. <laughs> All right. So did the father come up on Friday? Uh, I actually texted him today um, saying I thought I was going to see you this weekend. And he texted me back that he just got in town last night. Um, well, he was up in Maine. I guess Elizabeth was up in Maine at his, at her uncle's, at his brother's. So um, pretty much all I know. I, I have not seen the dad yet. I, I expect to be meeting him this week. Okay. And Elizabeth is still um, out of commission? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah, no, I'm not expecting. That's why I asked you the question the way I did. So she's yeah. not available. Right. Okay. Um, I think Cindy wants a horse. I do not. I've got two very nice horses. I'm all set. But I have a question. The white horse, who's a car maybe a carrier for strangles, a communicable yes. disease, is that the one you call the, um, the gelding? No, it's the other one, the white horse. The white horse is the gelding. Is yeah. a, is, is a, a carrier of strangles. Is the carrier. And yep. that's the one that we don't know where it is or that we do? No, it's at John's house. You have yep. that at your house. 
I've got the two mares. So which one has the strangles or whatever? It's I don't called? think any of them have it anymore. If they've cycled through it. That's what I thought from looking back a few minutes years ago. But they can be carriers. It can be in their um, sinuses and they can be carriers for life. Oh. It'll come and go. I was reading up on it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know the status of this particular horse, but I think it's the white horse who had who had had its strangles before. Is that right? I don't know. I know in, in the minutes in the minute searches that I did or that Katie did, um, it talks about one of them, but I don't know which one it is. Okay. So board members, um, any comments or questions for Wilson or John about the horse situation. It sounds like it's settled down temporarily. I don't know how long that will last. Do you have any idea, John, how long they're gonna be at your farm? Uh, I need to talk to the dad about that. Okay. Is, is there any, do we have any latitude? You know, I know on the, we're limited on, you know, kind of crossing over on other people's properties, but on the road side of this, you know, where they're dumping hay right beside the road. The horses are in the road. That kind of is a Collar Hill's not exactly a high traffic area, but it is a safety issue. And it yeah. certainly seems like it's a problem if you're great, if you know, vehicles are parked there and you can't, you have to grade around them. That's not good. Well, so that's not know. the case anymore. I mean, yes, that is an issue. I mean, her, her car was parked literally in the travel, travel lane. Yeah, I saw the photographs. Um, but that's way back. I don't know what they did. If they pushed it, it's way yeah, back from the road. Just moved it off the road. That car is unregistered and uninspected. Yeah. My understanding was that, what's his name? Terry, is it Terry Foster? It's my yeah. understanding that he went and moved it. Yeah, he did. Okay. Yep. Will it stay that way? It sounds like this is a recurring problem. That would be the question. Yeah, it is so, a recurring problem. So, I mean, that... I mean, do we have any recourse with that ourselves, you know, or should we? I don't know. Well, you can tow the vehicle after a warning, I guess. I mean, we think we should warn them. Um, but and if it's unregistered and uninspected, state police yeah, can write them tickets or the sheriff could write them tickets. Yeah, it's my understanding that you have to get the sheriff or the state police to issue a ticket. That's sure, in, the, be. in the research I've done. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, the idea is they write tickets in order to get people to get them off the road or get them registered or inspected. Either option is fine. So she's got it off the road. The issue is, the re is that this stuff recur recurs. Right. So. And, the, and where, is yeah. your vehicle, where is the vehicle now? Is it at it's her right. house or is it? So Peter Harvey's calling me and I'm in a select board meeting. I, I don't know why he's... No, he's on the screen. I don't know what he's doing here. Oh, wait, I'll answer it. Hold on. Hello? Yeah, I'm in a meeting, brother. He, oh, he can't get on. Cliff, he can't get on. All right, tell him to uh, dial the number in the agenda. Dial the number in the agenda. And just join us by phone. The video or something, Peter. Further down on the agenda should be, on the agenda itself, should be a phone number you can call in. Use the New York number. Link. New York number. All right, I almost didn't pick up, Peter. I thought you were losing your mind. He probably is. All right, okay, bye. See that Cindy has her hand up as well, Denise. Yeah, okay, I just wanted to make, see if board members had questions or comments. Sharon? Um, I appreciate that we are, that there are mitigation um, steps in place now. Wilson, thank you. Um, John, thank you. Um, I hope that we can turn our conversation to kind of bigger picture because it's, it's two things, right? It's like, what do we do right now? And then I know we've done this before, but, but maybe revisiting what are our options uh, at, at least our Remind that you know. Sharon, you keep cutting out. Um, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean the you know the I don't know what all the options would would be. Um, Cindy, you wanna you have something to say before I go on? I, I did. I wanted to comment that they were down on County Road running loose, and that's just not safe. Also, the fact that Collar Hill doesn't have a lot of traffic doesn't mean people don't use it. Eliza right. and I like to drive the pony that we have with the cart and ride the horses down there. And it's just, yeah. we've been avoiding that because you can't run into a herd of four horses. Right. I mean, I think we um, have to look at what's the longer, longer term fix. And I mean, looking back at minutes, this has been a problem for years. And, it, you know, it comes and it goes, um, you know, with her parking her, it's two things in my mind. She's, you know, when she's parking her vehicle in the town right of way or on the travel portion of the roads and then the horses. So they're two separate issues. Um, you know, you, we can, we asked our state representative to do something with this in the legislature back in, I think it was 2018 because we yeah. had an issue and Marshfield did with livestock. And yeah. I think there was something done, although I haven't looked for the statute on it, but it only it only applied it, it to cows and pigs. It didn't apply to horses. Oh, I haven't seen the wording of it, but it passed in the House and didn't didn't go anywhere in the Senate because of COVID oh, last okay. year. And so a new biennium now, so it would have to start over again. And I have spoken with both Janet and Andrew, um, and I don't know what's going on. I didn't get answers back from them yet. So it's a bit late in this year, I think, to get right. anything done. Harvey, H-A-R-V-E-Y. Join the um, meeting. And I, I have one more question. Has she been notified in writing with a registered letter? Does the town have documentation? I see it's in the minutes, but I think it'd be good to have documentation that you've been communicating with her. You're nodding, Katie? There is. We did a letter to her back in um, September of 2019. 2019. We sent her a letter about parking. Um, parking any vehicle animal in the town's right of way and sent her a copy of the statute. You know, the, the other option is an ordinance. Um, and ordinances are difficult to enforce in my experience. Um, you know, you've got to have some mechanism for enforcement. There's the other option of a pound keeper, but most towns at this point don't have pound keepers because the pound keeper was back in like the 1800s when everybody had it when everybody had a farm everybody had a barn so if somebody's cow was out roaming around they might corral it and take it to their place to take care of it so um those are those are two things that i can think of um for longer term fixes so I wondered if it was a notarized letter or like an official letter that you know she received and have proof that she received. Because before you take anybody's animals, you really have to notify them formally, I would hope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, this was this was just a letter that we sent. Um, and then the, like it does perennially, it goes, you know, the problem goes away and then it comes back. So um, this is why we're having this discussion to see what we might think of for options and what and what to do and we might it sounds like maybe we'll have more information after john talks with the, the father john you wanted to talk so to sort of answer cindy's quest list of questions that are in her mind um rightly so um you know we've explored a lot of this and hit dead end cindy um my recollection is yeah we could grab the animals and stable them somewhere but the cost to do that and what we would get reimbursed for, there's a huge gulf between those two numbers. It's like three dollars uh, a day or something, and, right? Now. Yeah. And and at the time there was an issue with the horse having strangles and maybe other stuff going on. So fast forward to where we are today. Um, one reason I'm I've been in conversation with the father, um, phone conversation with the father, is you know, to have the, the discussion about the need to recognize not only the person that's kind of owns the horses and been the subject of this discussion ongoing, but
but also the property that she, you know, keeps her animals on and the the capabilities of that property to to, to keep horses on that. And so the father, I, I strongly encourage him to see if he could find a quote unquote farm property with, you know, 10 acre field on it and a house with running water and electricity because there are more issues than horses going on here right now. Not to get into details, but it's a difficult lifestyle for a 20 year old. She's in her mid forties um, and has some health issues. And um, I think it's burning her out. And um, so the father recognizes that and I'm keeping my eyes and ears peeled for a property that might fit that, you know, level ground, a driver where she can park her car. <laughs> Maybe a barn to put horses in. Hay storage, yeah. A field, hay <laughs> storage. So, um, you know, we'll we'll see where that leads, and that's that's where I'm hoping our conversation heads us, and maybe we'll the, the solution will be more less a, a a matter of litigation and more a matter of kind of assisting yeah. this resident in finding a better set of accommodations for both her and her lifestyle. I guess that includes. Yeah. Her. Do you are you do you know has the father ever seen her place? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh he has. Okay. So he knows when you're talking about this, he knows mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Sharon. Um, I think I I if we're gonna um take this continuous conversation around you know revisiting our options around ordinance and etc. Then um maybe we should appoint a couple of us to work on that with with the interested neighbors and at least bring back a report the you know pros cons things we've we've already heard but you know pros cons formalize it um see if anything has changed see if there's any creativity that we didn't think of um and if we're not going to do that then you know, are we satisfied that there's not much we can do and and addressing the issues for in this one or two situations rather than sort of more globally from a policy perspective i, I guess I'm, just, I'm wanting to raise which which branch are we on because i know we're going to have to move on and and i like i like to be clear before we do that i guess i'd like to see how john um makes out in further conversation with the father and what he's willing to do and have John bring back to to us what he's learned and if the father has a plan before we take any other steps because we might not need to take other steps if the father's you know stepping up and helping out John does that make sense to you yeah well you know um I think this is a unusual situation and a unique situation for our town at present mm -hmm. um I mean Judy could tell us if, looking back if this has been an issue in the past i'm sure there has been a yeah. derelict farmer or two back through the decades you know I, I can think of a case up in cabot about 20 25 years ago i remember a case in east montpelier and i'll leave that one at that around this well about 35 years ago um, <clears throat> so this does happen every once in a while people fall on hard times and um, animals get neglected and there are reasons for animals to be, you know, grabbed and, you know, either put down or, you know, other, find, find other accommodations being found for them. But um, so we could, we could uh, pursue two tracks. I, I'm inclined to stay on the track I'm on. I don't think it interferes with the track that Sharon's suggesting. It's just another work work effort. Um, so it, if we don't anticipate this becoming a chronic issue with other residents, and let's just say we're successful in getting this resolved for the longer time frame, um, that's a lot of work um, and it may not be something we utilize. So just given what our workload is lately, it's kind of been a concern to all of us on the select board. Maybe we might want to wait a little bit um, or if, if Sharon's inclined or others are inclined to pursue that other path, just at least to get the information together, 
then if things don't work out on the track I'm on, then we can then jump to that. Either I way. think, yeah, I mean, I think we know what the track is. The only, you know, the track would be an ordinance and we know how, we know what that procedure involves. I would be inclined to hold off for a bit and see how you make out in talking with the father. Like you said, we, we've got enough work on our plates right now. Um, I guess I would wait for a follow-up and see where we're at. I'm good with that. I just really, I appreciate being really clear because there's people here who are interested. So just having that clarity of what we're doing or not doing is really good. Thank you. Okay, Rick or Cliff, any other thoughts? I'm good with that. Uh, <clears throat> well, with waiting until we see, get, until we have a little bit better idea of how this might get resolved. I mean, I do get, if we put an ordinance in place and animals get loose, you know, all the time. I've had many visitations from horses, but not regular occurring things like this. But, you know, I hate to create a situation where something, you know, we have an ordinance, we create a problem where there really isn't a problem. If you yep. follow me. Yeah. Yep. So, We're not looking for a, a, a solution and look at the problem. Yeah. I mean, it, this seems relatively isolated, though it is a recurring one. So if we can get rid yep. of this recurring problem, I, you know, I would hesitate to necessarily jump at an ordinance. Yeah. Cliff? <clears throat> yeah, I would agree with that as well. I think if we, if we do have to look for a um, larger solution, a more global solution, uh, we could revisit as well the idea of partnering with other towns to, to create um, sort of alternative humane society as it were um, that would be one possibility ultimately though i think uh that larger solution is going to have to come from the golden dome yeah um, yeah okay cindy did you have any last comment before? i i did i'll check in with the with the golden dome again and see what they're thinking down there okay um, I, I do think it would make sense to document this with a letter that's sent by registered mail so you have the town has proof that you've communicated with her about this. Um, and I also want to bring up a case I don't know a lot about, but there was a, cow, a bull that was struck by a car and the, the driver of the car was killed here in Vermont a number of years ago. Oh yeah, I remember that. It, you know, people fly on county road. We haven't changed the speed limit yet here, but even at 40, if you hit a cow or a horse, it's a problem. Yeah. On the other hand, I have animals and they get loose once in a while too, but it isn't chronic and I don't intend for it to go on. It might happen once right. or twice. I've been yeah. lucky, but this is chronic and she, the horses are damaging people's woods. They're, I can't believe all the neighbors that were in touch with me about this after I indicated in a, a concern about our woods. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, it's a bigger problem, I think, than people who haven't been watching the cars Stopping the car on County Road to avoid them getting hit. It's scary. Yeah. And yeah. I agree. Oh, I, yeah, I get four it. Four loose horses trying to get them to go up the snow machine trail through our woods and watching them crash the woods as they go. And they're completely out of control. It's really scary. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it should be documented. My, my suggestion would be to document it with an official letter that you send by registered mail so you know that she's received it and you have that official communication. Um, and, and then I'll talk with the Golden Dome down there and see what they think about a, a law because I think it's a broader state problem. There was a, a case in- Yeah, it is. A, it's, a, it's a bigger problem. Uh -huh. And like I said, you know, we went into this in great detail a year yeah. or two ago. Um, and, and the problem goes away eventually. But we do need to, you know, stay on top of it. And I think we'll wait for John to come back with us yeah, I, from I his conversation with the father. It doesn't sound like the problem has gone away up on the top of the hill there. It sounds like Nick and Valerie have had trouble with the horses. They've kicked Nick's dog. It's been a problem up there. Yeah, but right now the horses are well, are not around, right, John? The two horses are on in my fenced pasture. Yeah. Got triple wire, high tensile. You've got uh, good pasture. Gallagher fencing, and um, the other two are in Hardwick with probably even better fencing. Um, I will make a comment that, um, that, that yes, uh, that person got killed in Killington or on Route 4 there, yep. out of state.
couple um, hit a bull. Some guys, bull was never kept in. It was just wandering around Route 4, and it was at night, and they hit it. And those are kind of low, low, uh, short-legged animals as compared to horses. A wow. horse is like hitting a moose. Yeah. A yeah. moose in your windshield. Yeah. And it's they're almost always fatal to the yeah. driver and even front seat passengers because they wind up on your lap. Yeah. So, um, and those are big animals. They're probably as big, if not bigger, than a moose. So just food for yeah. thought. Yeah. You don't want that on your lap. No. Sharon, you had a comment? Thank you. Um, I just want to pick up on Cindy's point about a letter. Cindy, I was I was like formulating and I agree with Cindy, but then I realized right now, while the issue is kind of abated, there's maybe not this isn't the right time to send a letter. I mean, the time to send a letter is if the if the horses end up in the winter or at whatever point they end up being back there uh at the home on collar road that's the time to send the letter and that's what i want to wait and see what john finds out with the father if there's if he's looking if he's going to make a long-term solution then you know then we take it from there but i don't think we can do anything until we hear back from john with his conversation with the father right and a letter right now would be would be moot yeah i i think a letter right now would document that there's been an ongoing problem and could acknowledge that right now the problem is in is in contain is being contained. But I think if I were a parent or if I were an owner and received an official letter from the town that I had to sign to receive, and it said, "Your horses have been out. They've caused damage. We're upset about this. Townspeople are upset about this. This is an ongoing problem." Okay, and thank just you. stops there. You know, have the have the lawyer. I think look at it. But I think you it's the it's uh, it's kind of like when you're documenting the abuse of a child at school. You just kind of make notes and and keep a record of it, a written record, the the paper trail sure, counts for something. So something tangible to point back to. Yes. Well, I think yeah, I, I hear you, Cindy. Thank you for your um, for weighing in. So are we are we all set on this topic for tonight? And John, you could get back to us on depending on when we have our next meeting, either if we have a special meeting or on the 10th. Yeah. Okay. So, so hey folks, seriously, keep your ears open. There's a property with uh, a nice little field and a warm house with power and water, running yeah. water, that that would be helpful. We'd like yeah. to know about that. Yeah, it would be nice if she had better living conditions for sure. Yeah, I think that would go a long way. Yeah, yeah. So the okay. summer that we're going to hear back from John in two weeks or some people are going to ask me what happened at the meeting. I just wanted a final summary. Yeah, John, you can just tell them that, you know, John will be meeting with the father and he's going to um, get back to the select board with what he finds out and we'll probably take it up again on the 10th. Thank you. Yeah. If something changes, if something changes, Cindy, I'll let you know. Wilson, did you have anything else to update us on with? No, um, this is just that this has been going on for a very long time. She's a habitual offender. She has 11 acres of land. She won't cut trees. She has other animals that have died there, chickens, ducks. I've tried to take care of the chickens and ducks. They've disappeared in the past couple of weeks. There's two cats left. You know, I'll try to catch them and turn them into central Vermont. But I've been feeding these animals for a week and a half now. Um, I'm sick of dealing with her. It's been a long time. Yeah, no, and I, and I know you get the brunt of the people that are upset and mad and, you know, and it's unfortunate that they send some of the stuff that they send, but we really appreciate everything that you've done. Is there a way to catch those two cats and take them to the CVH? Yeah, I'm working on it. I'll, I'll you are. Them. Um, they're okay. not in danger right now. The other animals were. The chickens are gone. Probably um, a fox got those. A uh, fox or a raccoon. Uh, there yeah. Are some ducks there. They're gone. Um, well, you know, and this has happened in the past with her. She's had rabbits that have been killed. Um, I've sent you the picture of the corral. I measured it out this weekend. She was keeping four horses in 70 square feet of space. Oh, my God. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And it's, I mean, it's basically a homemade pole barn, four inch uh, birch logs uh, with a plastic roof over the top. It's not an ideal condition. Right. She has, she, she has a uh, fenced area in the back of the property. It's uh, not really fenced. They get out of that easily. No, they I know. Well, easily. my understanding is she actually intentionally let them out. Because well, because she had other everyone else's out. resources to feed her horses. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it's really got to stop. But... Well, let's see where we get, where we're at after John meets with the father, and then we can get back together and see yeah. where we're at and come up with a plan because I don't I think we can't come up with a plan tonight until we have more information okay yeah if we can't get a firmer resolution you know by getting her off that property in some place where she can manage these then I agree then we'll we are gonna we'll turn up the burners yeah so are we are we are we thinking this is a May 10th topic or a May 24th topic well, John's going to be talking with the father. I'm hoping May 10th. Uh, this, in terms of the, to the extent that the property and the facilities there or lack thereof is a large component. There are other components to this problem. That I'm not. Right. We're not going to get into those. Right. Um, but they're personal to her and I don't feel comfortable in broadcasting it around town. So, um, but even if things go fabulously well and she finds a better situation and may, might not even be in this town, um, that, that takes time, you know, even if we're on a good track. So, you know, this, in the meantime, I mean, the horses can stay at my place um, as long as they need to. Just don't want that gelding and he's getting shipped somewhere. Um, and the, I don't want the other horse. So I, I, the horses are fine. They're friendly enough. Um, they hang out with the cattle. It's fine. It well, doesn't bother me. Well, thank you, John, for, for doing Sorry, letting you, them yeah. stay not at a, your place. Not a big deal. So I, I don't think this is going to be an issue um, for a, a while now. But, you know, there is still what Wilson was talking about, other animals and not being cared for. and. Yeah. So, so let's just see how it goes. Take it day by day, week by week, and see where things go. Hopefully, they progress in a positive direction. Right, and that's why we'll stay on top of it with follow-ups. Okay. Okay. Sound makes sense, everybody. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, um, Mac Wilson. Good yeah. Morning. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Wilson. You do a fabulous job. I know it's a difficult situation, and you've handled it very well. Thank you all. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, um, thanks, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah, thanks. Cindy. Um, okay, so I thought I saw Alfred here. Oh, there he is. Um, Alfred, we already talked about the the truck issue, and John and Rick are gonna work with you on that those documents. Oh, there you are that you sent. So you'll be hearing from them in the next day or so. So they're going to work with you and get back to the full board. How are they going to work with me? With the, the Zoom meeting? Are they going to come to my shop? What? I don't know. The, they'll. I guess they'll have to contact you when you guys can figure it out. Probably by Zoom. Is for me right now. I'm really busy at my work, so it's hard for I, me to I, get this during the day. I was thinking I'd write you a letter sometime, Alfred. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Mail, mail. Sure. Yeah, I think we I think we can get this done quicker um with Alf, uh, with um John and Rick working with you on it and coming back to the board with a recommendation. I think we can get get it resolved quicker. Okay. So in, well, I I just don't want to lose another truck. This is a good truck. Yeah, know, we hear you. I know That's you want to the people. John, do you have any time tomorrow? You and Alfred and I can uh, or Alfred, do you have a window where you could get a half an hour with us or something? On uh, yeah, I've got or... a I've got a meeting at Chapin Forest Road at ten o'clock. I could do it before then or after then. I'm booked up. My mornings are tough. Uh, I've got a bunch of 
afternoon is fine. Yeah. Does that work for you, John? Sometime in the afternoon, like a Skype? Uh, yeah, I was going to, oh, I'd just rather just meet, go down to the garage and meet Alfred in person. It's just a little difficult for me. It's that it adds another hour to my. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, we can work. Yeah, I'm really busy right now. So we I'm could, not. I don't could you know put, could you put Rick, could you put Rick on by phone and and John if he's available could go right to the shop do a conference call with Rick yeah that would work for me yeah well, Rick where are you you gonna be at your house tomorrow yeah yeah I'm working at what if we day. just meet you at your house tomorrow I could do that it shouldn't, it shouldn't take long for me to just uh, you know to update you on the information that I've received yeah why don't we could do that we could do that can we meet at rick's house at four o'clock we can have an outside meeting or something yeah 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 that that works okay sounds like a yeah. good plan that work so, alfred uh four o'clock i'm due to be home uh three o'clock like like let's, let's do three perfect okay all right great thank you guys right. yeah so um, do you right. need me for any more denise because no no, I think we're good. Okay, great. Have a good night, all. Right. All. Thanks, good night. Alfred. Thank you, Alfred. Right. Bye. Okay. Uh, Denise, um, can you hear me? I can, Peter. How are you? Oh, hi. Okay. Uh, then just so long as you know I'm here. You haven't talked about the, the my email yet? No, that we don't. We didn't have time to put that on the agenda tonight. I have it down. For us to oh, it was, talk, talk about it on the 10th. Oh, okay. It was on the agenda that uh, was on Front Porch Forum the other day. No, I'm, I guess I don't understand why. I have a list that says future agenda items and dates after each oh. item. Oh, so okay. I don't know how I can, I'm trying to figure out how I can make it clearer. All right. Is, is Alfred going to start mowing row sides or can I, can I put up my signs now anyway? Well, we're not going to make that decision tonight, Peter. Is Alfred going to start mowing roadsides pretty soon? That, not yet. Nothing's at that point. Nothing's, nothing's growing yet. That'd be a, okay. that's a month off anyway, anyway, a lot longer than that. All right. Six weeks. Uh, okay. Um, and so, we'll all right, on the 10th. Yeah, we'll, pr we'll try to talk about it on the 10th. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. 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 Yeah, Peter before you go, um, one of the things that we're working hard to do is is you know we, at at the end of each meeting we spend time thinking about okay how much time does this topic need. So, if you have um, a particular thought about how long you're going to need to make the points you want to make, it might be good for you to just let us know that right now so we can be planning on that. Well, I think I already made just about everything in the long email I sent you, but um, the only thing I would add to that is uh, that I'm not pulling large flowering plants anymore. I'm just digging everything up that's over six inches high. Mm -hmm. um, and because I found the last summer with the drought uh, that uh, I couldn't pull them up because the ground was so hard. And so I started using a garden fork to loosen the soil and take them out that way. So I'm getting... Uh, not just uh, last summer, I, I didn't just take uh, flowering plants. I took all the plants I could find. Well, I think uh, we're I think we're getting into it tonight more than we had really planned for. So maybe you could kind of do a bullet point list of, uh, you know, just do a bullet point thing because your emails are very thorough and very long. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I just, I, them. Peter, I, I really don't, I wanted to just mute it for you to have a heads up that that we are we are we are working really hard to be disciplined and and uh, intentional in getting topics open. So thank you. Thanks for being here. We'll see you on the tenth, right? Yeah, we'll see you on the tenth. And if you have if you have um, something like I suggested with a bullet point list that's easy to to read, that would be really helpful. Okay. Okay. Uh, why don't I? Is, was it Sharon that was talking with me? Well, yeah. Sharon and I. So we got to. Yeah. Okay. Gotta, the, we got to move I, on. I, I will. Uh, I'd like to talk to Sharon on the phone. Then I'll do that, uh, and then find out just what it is you really want, and not make it too long. So 
So I'll okay. catch up with Sharon later. Thank All you. right. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Now we're pretty much on track. So um, next up is we have Grace. Hi, Grace. We should introduce the board to you. Let me go around. Um, Rick Keen, you want to raise your hand so she knows? I guess she can tell who everybody is. Yeah, their we, names are on the screen. I we introduced each other when I, we first signed on. So. Okay. And hi, Grace. I'm Denise. Um, John. You want to say hello to Grace? Oh, my audio is on. Yes. Yeah. Hi, okay. Grace. <laughs> How are you? Hello. Hi, everyone. And then we have Sharon. You want to say hi? Hi, Grace. Welcome. Thanks. And Cliff. Grace. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome and thanks for joining us. All right. So there's been a group working on this local hazard mitigation plan for since what is it 2019 grace we started or something yeah we had our first select i came to the select board meeting in maybe january or february of 2000 yeah i don't remember time flies and this is ruby she's been a hi. while oh hey. very cute say hello to ruby hi ruby look at all those people ruby yes you're such a good girl okay so you had um we're kind of getting close to the end of the process. And I have made a note that we need to ad adopt this like sometime in July. Yep. Okay. And we've been having some different Zoom meetings um, and going through various hazards and how we might mitigate that, making identifications. And it worked out really, oh, the moon is just amazing if you guys all look out the window um the um covid pandemic you know we hadn't when we were started this who who would have thought about a pandemic so we've added a pandemic to um things to think about and how we deal with those but i know grace has a slideshow presentation yep um cliff cliff's our cameraman Oh, great. Is this the one I shared at like four, Denise? Um, I don't know. Cliff, is it? I know Katie put it in the folder. Okay, it's fine if not. Your All speaker's right. turned off, Cliff. It's dated 42621. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Cliff. All right, so yes, this is short, I promise. It shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. It won't be death by PowerPoint. Um, I can just say next slide if that works. All right, that so, a, okay. Agenda, just wanted to give a brief background on what exactly a hazard mitigation plan is, why it's important and how it can benefit Callis or yeah, Callis. Um, give some updates on how we've been going about this plan update process, talk about what the hazards are, mitigation actions, and then next steps. Uh, next slide. All right, so uh, local hazard mitigation plan is really just establishing the foundation for a mitigation strategy for the community. So what are the hazards that affect Callis and what can we do to mitigate those hazards and reduce risk? So there are a ton of different benefits. Um, one big one is that for a lot of uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA grant programs. Uh, the community, if you apply, you have to have a current local hazard mitigation plan. So that's a requirement for a lot of those grant programs. And another one is, uh, you may have heard of the Emergency Relief Assistance Fund. This is when there's a disaster declared and communities can apply for uh, reimbursement for projects from FEMA. The state pays for some of that, but the community pays for the rest. And once your new hazard mitigation plan is adopted, your share of what you would contribute after a disaster is gonna go down, which is great. So those are some of the big benefits. Next slide. So this is the basic uh, you know, contents of the LHMP. Community profile is, you know, what are the demographics? What's 
kind of the land use, uh, what development has been going on, things like that. Planning process just describes, you know, how did this plan get updated? What kind of meetings were held? Who was involved? And then the meat of the plan is talking about the hazards. So what are the hazards that affect the community? And um, really going into, you know, what kind of events have there been? What kind of disasters have been declared? What has been impacted, you know, uh, bridges or roads or neighborhoods and things like that? really calling attention to the areas that are vulnerable in the community to these different hazards. And then mitigation strategy. So looking at those hazards and thinking about, you know, what can the town do to mitigate and to reduce the impact from those hazards going forward over a five-year period, since these plans are updated every five years. Next slide. So CVRPC is assisting CALIS through an MOA. Um, CALIS, can, CALIS is gonna pay up to $2,500 in cash or in-kind services. So I've been documenting with the assistance of the planning team. Um, I've been collecting these match forms that they submit every month just to document what kind of meetings and what kind of work they've been doing on the plan. Um, so we've held six meetings so far and the planning team has been really great they've done tons of work on you know various documents in between the meetings which has been really helpful um, we also put out a survey in january that got 37 responses which was great and we kind of looked at that and thought about you know how does the survey responses how should that factor into the plan and then um so I'm gonna be putting out the draft for public comment the first week of May, so in a couple of weeks. And then after that, uh, I'll take a look at the comments and we'll meet with the planning team. If, you know, if there are a ton of really in-depth comments that require a lot of discussion, we'll have another meeting. I'll uh, develop the final draft. And then once that's approved by Vermont Emergency Management, the select board can adopt that final plan. Next slide. Do we have to hold any type of, I can't remember, do we have to hold any type of public informational meeting on this or anything like that? I don't believe so, but I'll double check. Okay. That's a good question. So hazards, um, the box on the right-hand side is what the 2015, the last LHMP talked about in terms of hazards. So some of those have carried over into the 2021 plan, but like Denise said, there are a couple of new hazards. Um, pandemic is one of them. Callus is one of the first, along with Montpelier, one of the first communities in the state that's gonna be incorporating that into your LHMP, just cause we started it in 2020. Um, and then invasive species and drought are also new. Uh, next slide. So these are, this isn't the full list of mitigation actions, but these are just some examples I wanted to show you all just to give you a sense of what kind of things the planning team has been talking about. There's been a lot of really great uh, discussions during our meetings about, you know, what does the town actually have capacity for? What kind of things have you already been thinking about and planning maybe? And, you know, what projects are kind of in the works that you can include in this plan? So there are kind of, there's this huge table we've developed um, and, you know, it lists the hazard and then it lists some mitigation actions. So these are just some examples of that. Um, one of them, and, and there are some that apply to kind of all the hazards, like establishing a town account for BT alert. Um, that was something that came from the survey because uh, some people, or I think the majority of responses like didn't have awareness of VT alert. So that was something we kind of wanted to leverage. And then another one was developing a section on the town website with information on flood resilience and hazards. And we wanted to do that to kind of just raise information and awareness of hazards in the town from the residents perspective. uh next slide all right so like i said i'm going to be putting the draft out for public comment in may 
collecting the comments and revising the draft and then submitting the final draft in June. And once we get that VEM, Vermont Emergency Management approval, Callis can adopt it at a select board meeting in July. I think that's the last slide. That's all I wanted to share. I just wanted to give a really you know, brief overview of what we've done so far and where we're headed. And I can definitely answer questions. Yeah, I want to thank Grace. She's really done a great job of leading us through this process. It's been um, Nick and Betty and Jan and myself um, working together on this. And I think, I think, from my perspective, I think we've done a really good job. Everybody's been very active and participated and come yeah, up with ideas. And it's been a, it's been a great working group. I have to say, from my perspective. Yeah, thank you. Agreed. Looks like it. Thank you for. Yeah. And I think, you know, I'm when curious. I put the. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I do. Who's talking? Yeah, that is, you know, I'm wondering if if it's Rick. Rick oh, okay. Uh, I'm wondering in this, is there any, do we have any technology based things like Ushahidi, you know, the cloud, the crowd or cloud based information sourcing that that might be on a website we don't, i didn't see anything mentioned in that you know where you know people can download an app like we did this at addison regional and they used the sofa in japan during uh, during the tsunami and it was it's been used in africa but people can download a free app and if there's a disaster anywhere in town on a road that they live on or they drive they can actually report it in and it can be then checked uh you, you can verify it before you actually publicly post it, but it's, it's a way of improving your eyes and ears in a community, and it's really valuable. Kevin Beam actually is the one that found this down at Addison Regional. You know, he was our GIS planner. I think he just retired, but we were experimenting with that. And something of that nature, it was very simple and something that anyone in the public can use, and it really, it really improves your eyes and ears early on in things like flood or disaster. You know, COVID is one of these longer emergency situations. Floods and, you know, natural disasters like that, you tend to have a lot of your risk is right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Most of your, and that's when you actually want eyes and ears. So if you're able to filter in that information, very valuable. So it may be, yeah. it may be worth mentioning or, and it may be worth the town exploring that because if it was something informational, I'd say if it was set up so that we could operate that people could just download that if you know if they would see it referenced on a website or something and then yeah. we would just have to manage that i think we we were looking at it from the rpc and they were doing it for our towns but i'm sure uh, that's something i'm sure that's what is something it called Grace could check out. yeah well, what is Usha, it called again ushahidi i can't spell it i think it's u-s-h-a and then h-i-t-i -I, something like uh I could okay. find out for you, Grace, if Kevin, I, I can contact Kevin. I think he's still down there at Addison temporarily. He's retiring, but okay. talk to him. He's the one that found it. Hmm. Interesting. That's he's really like, interesting. I've never heard of that, but it sounds really cool. The only like similar app is BT Alert, like that is used on a statewide level, but you know, similar to how a town can set up a VT alert account and put out personalized alerts. That app sounds really interesting. I'll definitely look uh, it, was, it. it. was really great. I mean, they, I, like I said, I think it was developed, I believe in Africa, and then they used it during the, during the uh, tsunami in Japan very effectively. And then I think heaven had it set up. We were using it during Irene as well here hmm. in Edison. And, and so, um, okay. uh, thanks, yeah, it is. thanks Rick. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sharon, you had a question or comment? Uh, yeah. Hi, Grace. Thanks. Hi. Um, so I was on the 20, on the examples, the 2021 mitigation exam actions examples. One of the, the one that caught my eye is the, um, and I, and I understand it's just an example, but I, but I want to hear really, what does that mean? And where did it come from? Determine ownership of Curtis Pond Dam. I, I think we've already done that. Right. So you know, mm. I, so right. Am I misunderstanding, guys? John, Denise, do we already can, know. We already is, know who owns, and so raising it as a as though it's a question makes me curious. This is Nick. I can give an update on that if you like. Um, that has been a, a 
a ping pong ball going back and forth. Um, the ownership was established. Then that person um, re unowned it. And then it went to another, it got another legal opinion and it's been all over ping pong, all over the place. My understanding is the current status of that is that we are back in the um, a zone of unknowing. Now, John's shaking his head no. So John, you may have more up-to-date information. So it, it's convenient to the owners to say that it's in limbo. It's convenient to the owners and their liability to say it's confusing or we there's a there are dueling opinions. It's kind of like, if I can use a, a, a current example, it's kind of like the one scientist in the world that disagrees climate change is real. And then using that as the argument that there are two prevailing arguments. Um, that's what's going on here. We have, there is no disagreement. We are competent in our legal opinion. We, we hired a, a law firm and uh, I will put it right out there. And I'd say this right to Paul Gillis who was representing the father Gills. Paul Gillis cited a paragraph from a section of law without and took it out of context. And if you added in the next paragraph, it made no sense at all. And it wasn't applicable to this situation. And when we then, our attorney then challenged him, he backed away and said, well, we, we, we just wanna work it out. And so subsequent to that, we are made an arrangement with the father gills and without the father grills agreeing with us, but we clear we were clear that we we're, we're clear on the law. Um, yeah. He okay. agreed. He <laughs> and Candace, Jeff and Candace, agreed that you know they don't want the dam. That's clear, and they had no problem with the town pursuing an application to have a the dam rebuilt or replaced, and had no problem with us taking the lead on it and as the landowner and as the dam owner and signed us agreement or signed off on our being allowed to do that. Um, and so we did pursue and we got a special uh, reprieve from the state requirement that the landowner, the dam owner had to be the applicant because the state understood the town was not the applicant e or the owner either and that the father gills were. So with all that being said, we went through a, a, a very involved engineering evaluation and design and finally got an engineer set of engineer final engineer plan stamped approved by the state for a new dam design and the understanding was that when the dam got built and it were fun was funded by someone other than father gills um i.e the town um and maybe other contributors that once the dam was built the new dam that the league would then be able to insure it because all the liabilities that are associated with the current dam, the risks um, fall away. And there's an engineer's certification that this meets all standards and VLCT's insurer, um, was it passive? Passive, was willing yes. to include that new dam under its policy. And at that point in time, we would accept ownership of the new dam um, and insure it. So. That was the arrangement. This is not confusing. This is very clear. We had a very clear path. Um, there's a is an interest to make it confusing. What I'm just going to say, and uh, we spent a lot of time and effort making making drawing those clear legal lines. Okay. Well, thank you, John. I, my information is at least two years old, and I appreciate the update. So we can cross that one off the, off but, the list of tasks. But I yeah, right, my information is older than that, Nick. It's just yeah. that. There's been there's been a lot of misinformation that continued in Swirl and Maple Corner, um, just so you know. There's a lot of. I think it, 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 it originally came up as a possible hazard if the dam were to break. Yeah. Yeah, more than more than possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's significant it's acreage of water concern. behind that. <laughs> it's a serious right. concern. Yeah. And just to be clear, the what the state considers as the concern behind the impoundment is is the fluid and they include the mud right 
And if you will, it, it, there's there's not as much water that would actually, because that was originally two ponds that are below that dam level. And then when that dam was built in whatever, 1810, it raised the level to the point where both ponds became one. And so that all that water would, it's understood, would not drain out. But a sig significant amount of mud would come out with the water that did leave. And that's where the hazard is, is would be from. Yeah. Anything else for Grace? Are you ready to move on? All right, thank you. Thank you, Grace. Um, one, yeah, question, thank you. one question, Grace. We have to readopt the local emergency management plan, which is different than the local hazard mitigation plan. It's another so acronym. I, yeah. yeah, I know. I'm learning. There's all kinds of acronyms out there. So I'm looking to perhaps we could do that on May 10th. Yeah, that's fine. We encourage to get it in by May 1st, but there's not really a penalty, so it's fine if you do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thanks, Grace. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Um, we're a little, well, we're almost right on schedule. That's amazing. Um, website group has been working to do some work on our newly updated website um, and they could use some assistance. There's a memo that they sent us. Um, Cliff, can you call that memo? Up? Anyways, they're looking for some assistance and um, I think Katie, if the board approves it, has agreed to do some extra work outside of her recording duties, recording secretary duties. Um, so the website group is asking us to approve Katie to work on that project and to pay her. The only question I had, and I put it out there and maybe Nick, I mean, it's not that much money, but Nick, do you know if we can get reimbursed through the COVID funds for that? I have not looked into that, but I will do so. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's 600. It's like, we're looking at maybe $600 or so. So it's not a huge amount of money and it would be nice to get the website. Um, I've had mixed reviews from folks on the new website. So I think we really need to get it um, in better shape. Well, the main issue currently, the status is that uh, they gave us a great visual graphic design, but then they tossed the, the content into it willy nilly. So really <laughs> it's not usable because you can't yeah. find what you're looking for, but it looks pretty. Yeah, I haven't had I haven't had great luck finding stuff myself when I've looked. So I think the sooner we could get it up so that people can find stuff on it, the more useful it will be to the public. Anybody else got a question? I can't see everybody's hands. Anybody have any thoughts or comments on this? Yeah, what? I would I would move to. Uh... Go forward. To to move Author, to uh, authorize Katie to work on the website. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are we putting in a fixed price or do we want to say, I don't know that if 600 is enough, we want to say 600 and if it gets to be that amount, we come back or do we want to have a little leeway to say between six and a thousand dollars? I'd like to amend the motion to um, pay Katie whatever our going hourly rate is um, with the understanding that we have 600 at the base, but that if it if she spends more time than anticipated or she goes over that $600 amount based on our hourly compensation that she get that add additional compensation. Okay. If you, I think we look at $20 an hour, don't we? Yeah. That's yeah, our that's what she gets number. now. Yeah. Yeah. So... I would second, or I guess Cliff, that's a motion, a friendly amendment to your motion. Yeah, I would accept that friendly amendment. Okay, and I'll second it. Any further discussion, comments, questions? All right. I can actually, yeah, I I think Denise, you asked the question. Are we, John? Does your you asked the question about whether we are okay with going over six hundred? 
And John, did your amendment address that question? Yeah, my amendment says that we'll compensate Katie at a rate of $20 an hour. And if she reaches a $600 amount, um, and exceeds that, that we will continue to compensate her at $20 an hour until she gets the job done. And okay, I'm fine with that, except I, I just want to repeat because I really like this. Thank you, Denise. Nick, if we can pay for it from the COVID money, which makes all sense to me in the world because it's related to the COVID project of the website. Right. Even better. All right. Thank well, you. I should clarify that we can't use the grant money from the grant that's already over and done, we'd be anticipating future COVID money coming down the pike, but we don't know for sure. Sure. Okay. So let's keep that. <coughs> so Nick, you'll keep that in your pocket yeah. to check out at some point. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. Well, okay. if, if that's the case, if that's the case, um, if we get the COVID money, I'd like Katie to get $100 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Plus so is so is it business. so is it up to a thousand dollars that we're willing to spend without go, going back to the board for additional approval? Is that what I'm hearing? That makes that sense. seems reasonable enough. If it's getting close, I mean that we would be able to within a two week period we'd be able to revisit that if we had to. We had to yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you ready to vote, Select Board? Um, Rick. Aye. I'm an aye. Um, Cliff. Hi. John? Yes. And Sharon? Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Have fun, Katie. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, and Katie. Website team. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Up next is Ruben. How you doing, Ruben? You're on mute. Hi, y'all. How are you? Good. How are Hi, you? Ruben. Good. So we um, asked you to join us because this is kind of like our annual checkup and yep. our contract is due to re renew on May 1st, I believe. Is that right? I believe that's correct. That's yeah. correct. So we had requested that you annually meet with the yep. board and kind of give us, you know, our physical, annual physical on all of our technology and what recommendations you have and all that yep. good stuff. So I'll turn it over to you to give us our annual. Okay. So I'm I'm going to first apologize because normally we give you like an executive summary that the select board reviews ahead of time. Um, and I didn't have that until uh, Friday afternoon, very late. So um, I did not have a chance to review that and get it over to you ahead of this meeting. Um, that aside, the network is basically a brand new network at this point and needs, uh, I think the only note on the executive summary is the laptop that uh, we sent a proposal over for last week. Um, everything else in the network is basically new and running optimally. The server was replaced last year. Um, the infrastructure was all replaced last year. Um, your wireless infrastructure, your link over to the town hall, um, uh, your backup infrastructure is all running on um, a close to new gear. Um, so there's there's really nothing to do other than that one laptop um, in the next 12 months. And then from a from an annual sort of budgetary perspective, you know, our standards, our standing recommendation is to replace a quarter of your work uh, workstations per year. Um, so you just take the number of machines that you have, divide that by four, um, and put that money aside. It doesn't mean that you have to replace the machines on year four. If they're running fine and they're not causing anybody trouble, then you can defer that uh, purchase and that expense by a year. Um, but from a budgetary perspective, um, it's really just a matter of putting you in the driver's seat so that you're looking at all these expenses a year, two years, three years out. Um, so that uh, so that you're doing appropriate financial planning. Nobody likes going to the select board for more money. So, <laughs> um, so it's all uh, all in support of um, keeping you folks that are uh, responsible for the fiscal pieces uh, in the driver's seat. Was there anything in the executive summary that stood out to you? 
Um, let's see. Short-term recommendations are replace or retire the uh, aging laptop and create a financial plan. Um, th those are the recommendations. Um, so, you know, uh, to sort of parse that apart a little bit, that means that, you know, you just did a server that's gonna yeah. last between five and six years. So if I would advise you to look at that project and probably add 10% just to be safe um, and put that, you know, a, a fifth of that, 20% of that um, aside per year as, you know, as this project. Um, you know, the, we, 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 have, we have started a technology yeah. fund. So, Good. Yeah. I, I know that we talked about that last year. So this, I wouldn't expect that this is coming as news to anybody. Uh, but I also see a couple of faces that I don't remember seeing on the select board. But oh, maybe, maybe we should we should we should back up and introduce everybody. Um, you know me, I'm Denise Wheeler. Rick, do you want to go next? Yeah, you. I, hey, Rick. Ruben, we know each other from <laughs> school board, so I'm absolutely. Sure. How are you? I'm good. And Thank Cliff. And you know, we talked a few times, Ruben. How a you doing? A few times. <laughs> yeah. Um, John. Hey, Ruben. I just moved here from Utah. <laughs> um Sharon. Hi Ruben. We met last year. I wanted We did. Okay. Or I guess 2 years ago maybe. Um whenever we whenever we were in the office. But I want to say I do want to say thank you. I am so excited that we have we're having this checkpoint in time where you're saying this is good. You need a new mm -hmm. laptop here. Make a plan like this and we're like okay. Thank you. No surprises. This is very much our, we work really hard to get all of our clients to this spot where mm -hmm. you're, you're just, you're operating according to plan. You, yeah. you know, what's coming up, you know, where you're headed, you know, the, the variables are basically isolated now to new things that come along that you need to do either as an, from an IT perspective or, a network management perspective or change of business that requires a you know line of business application or we're, we're basically just running according to plan and responding to new things that come along so good on you for for being uh, responsive to um to the recommendations that we've made um and i know that uh you know we we did a couple of sizable projects this last uh, this last year um and uh, so now you're just in the, okay, we can sort of sit back and, um, and run our IT for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we, we appreciate your helping us come up with a plan so that we don't have surprises and we can, you know, plan for, we can't really plan for everything, but we can do our best to um, be responsive to your recommendations. And I think that's what we've done in establishing the reserve fund. I have a quick question, Ruben. You have, you know, have has uh, Nick Amblin involved you with any of the emergency management planning, the local, and then do, is our technology? I mean, obviously, this all of our IT technology is major communication and data sh sharing of great importance in in kind of emergency events. And we've got. It sounds like you've managed all our core needs here, and I don't know if there have been any cons conversations about that emergency planning resilience and it's are there opportunities there that we should be looking at good question you know in, good question rick that's a great question so um i'm going to preface this by saying that at the end of the day all of the planning and work that we can possibly do is still contingent on insufficient internet at the town office which uh, you know when covid happened we we all talked um, about a couple of ideas related to the fact that the internet at the town office was just insufficient to do what you were trying to do. Um, and uh, my, remind me, I don't, I think you're still on DSL, correct? That's yeah. correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a plan in place, my understanding, and it sounds like um, we're at least optimistically hoping that this fall, um, CV fiber or something will come through, um, yeah. which I would be fantastic. And to your question, Rick, would 
enable a, a much more uh, robust. robust conversation around that. To back up a step though, you have full remote access capability into the network for, through VPN and, and all of the things. All of those things are already in place. That's frankly, it's a standard a part of any network that we build. Um, and the it's contingent on having enough bandwidth and a reliable mm -hmm. enough internet connection to be able to use that. And so that, you know, going back in time, that um, a year ago when we were talking about this, or maybe it wasn't quite a year ago, um, we were sort of brainstorming with how do, if we can't get internet to the office, can we get the office to better internet? Right. Um, and that was, a, that was a very smart conversation to have. Um, it was, you know, I ultimately that didn't end up being, um, I, I want to say that maybe you moved to the Nimric cloud. Yeah. Um, and so that mitigated some of the, um, some of the real tripping, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. tripping points. Well, um, the goal is to have David Healy our CV fiber delegate come to the board sometime probably early summer and give us an update on what's going on and what the plan is. Should I remember to invite you to that discussion? Would you be interested in hearing? You certainly can, David, uh, you know, uh, so I, David is phenomenal. Yeah. And you're incredibly lucky to have somebody with the amount of knowledge of this stuff that he has yeah. uh, working in CV fiber. Um, one of my folks is on the CV Fiber board as well. That's right, Jared. Uh, so yeah, so he also a Calus resident. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I get um, I get the high points um, okay. on sort of you know what's going on and and where things are at. So the what? executive summary. Will you forward that to yes to us? Okay. Yeah, I'll send it over. And it, to you. and it definitely, if you see opportunities for us that we might want to explore, put them in there. That's you know maybe that's a conversation we can have with you in the future. I know I've worked in this emergency management field a lot with the state, with the mm -hmm. emergency operations center, things like that. So I've seen where breakdowns happen, and that this is like critical infrastructure for us today, and it's yep. vulnerable. So I don't know if things like Starlink or you know, even if they're slower, but if, if you have hard line breaks, I mean, do you need redundancy of any kind or do you have, uh, you know, this is what we, it'd be really valuable to talk to you right. about. So, risk. you know, disaster planning and business continuity are sort of standard fare for us. And mm -hmm. um, we're, we're more than happy. We have opinions about everything. <laughs> right. um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's it's an interesting conversation because last year when we were talking about this, we couldn't even have a conversation about it because you had DSL and that was all you had. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And you don't have another option, period. And this year, you have the possibility of getting a Starlink dish, mm -hmm. you know, for, for this... I don't know that it's worth the $100 a month for the town, for how seamless it might or might not be. Right. And this, um, and this is Starlink. That, you're Starlink is a hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah, it's a it's four hundred ninety nine dollars for the terminal, and it's a hundred dollars a month. Um, I do have um, I, I know a handful of folks, one of whom is an employee, who have Starlink terminals, and they moved to Starlink from DSL, and it is an absolute breath of fresh air. They can functionally work from home, which they have not been able to do. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it is, uh, it's great. It's not quite business great, is, right. is what I'm hearing. Like the, they're not, I don't know. I can delve into the sort of technical details of this if you like, or I can just give like a real quick glossy. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do the quick one. I'm going to do the really quick glossy. So um, the, stat the satellites for Starlink are not geostationary, meaning that they're passing over, mm -hmm. right? Which mm -hmm. means that as you, as they run out of range, your, your terminal has to connect to the next one that goes by in line. 
It's sort of like when you're driving on cell towers, almost like the roaming handoff. Um, sure. And okay. so they're, they're still bulking up um, how many satellites are in orbit. And they're also adding a lot of customers. So there are hiccups about every 10 or 15 minutes where you lose your internet connection. And it might just be for a second and it might be for like 10 or 15 seconds. Not a big deal if you're just sort of doing stuff, but if you're VPNing into an office and you're trying to do things, that's more of a big deal. So, so that's, maybe, that's, maybe we wait until we see what um, update David and Jared can give us. Yeah. I, I would I would hold off on that conversation until you've got a little firmer idea of when the fiber might come. Um, and then if it's going to be a while, then, you know, it may be, it may be worth looking at. Um, mm -hmm. And it may be something that from a business continuity and operations planning, is it worth 1200 bucks a year to have that as a secondary internet connection? It's redundant. Yeah, it's a redundancy. So, so how does, so I guess, how does maybe. that work? So we would keep our DSL. And if that wasn't working well, you could hop onto the Starlink thing. I think considering that it's as, uh, we would probably, we would probably have you try it as your production line and see how it goes. Um, mm -hmm. I have a sneaky feeling it's not going to go great, um, yeah. but you know we can we can test it briefly and find out pretty quickly and mm -hmm. just you know flip it back over so that the DSL is the primary. I do have one question that's if Rick is done with this topic. Um, yeah. What what is are we in good shape security wise? You know, every little while we get some weird. I mean, it, Gmail spam is far less than I got to say my Fairpoint, my other account, my Fairpoint account. I get a yep. ton of spam, so it's sometimes it's a surprise when you get one that's Gmail. But you know, they're pretty. I mean, I think we do a good job of looking at stuff before we open up an email and we usually and we report it you know right away to you guys mm -hmm. uh, but, I, always, I mean is there a lot going on that we don't see uh always <laughs> ah. um but the the positive uh, another positive of the fact that your infrastructure is all new is that anytime that we replace a significant piece of infrastructure we do a full security review it's not a security audit. It's not a, you know, we're not going through the entire every bit and piece of the network or um, the workflows or anything, but we do uh, make sure we have sort of a, a belt and suspenders double check to make sure that the network um, settings and server settings and all of those things uh, meet our standards of practice for security. So, um, so that got done as part of um, the implementation of the uh, infrastructure and the server. So, so what do you, so brief what do you answer recommend? to your question is that you you're in a pretty good spot. So then, how do do you do you or do you recommend that we do some kind of a security audit? I think you called it every year or something, or, or is that just part of what you do? Um, we don't do a security audit every year. We can do a security audit every year. Um, uh, we, we do security assessments for a whole variety of different folks. Um, generally speaking, it's, it's a good idea um, to do it. You know, it, maybe you don't do it every year. Maybe you do uh, an audit every couple few years um, and do sort of a light double check in, in the middle. Um, there's sort of two pieces to this. One, if we set it up, um, even though I didn't set it up, it you know, may not be the worst idea to have somebody else double check the work uh, to do the auditing. Um, if you want more of an, an informal security assessment, then um, we, do, we do a lot of, of security work just to sort of put it out there. Um, and when we, uh, assess a network that we run, which we do a lot. Um, the way that we keep the separation of duties and make sure that um, that there's no sort of collusion or anything going on is that we have a different engineer than manages the network do the security assessment. Um, and I oversee all of the security assessments. Um, and I, I assume 
I assume there's a, an additional fee for that. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, and, you know, that would be something that we would quote as a, a job and we would want to scope it out for exactly what pieces you're asking us to um, to investigate and how deep you want us to go mm-hmm. and whether there are regulatory or mm-hmm. other um, oh, compliance hi. pieces. I'm on, a select, I'm, I'm on a select board Zoom, but they're talking about- Hey, Barbara, Barbara could, you, Barbara, could you put yourself on mute? Thank you. So, uh, so that's something that we could quote, um, uh, that we would be delighted to quote, um, and uh, and sort of parse apart what it is that specifically you want to uh, you want to assess. Well, I guess it wouldn't. I don't know what anybody else thinks, but I think it might be a good idea to at least get a quote, see what that I, would cost. I would agree totally. That's a, an issue to these days, as we all know. So I think, that... I think given that our, our system, as Ruben said, is uh, relatively new and they have done some um, <coughs> peeking around in it, uh, we're probably in good shape, but it's something that we could look to budget for in our next round of budget planning. Yeah. And that's when, I would, uh, that's when I would get a quote. Is that something too that we actually, you know, do set up as a, as a routine? You know, every whatever some recommend every two years or whatever that is. Yeah. You know, what would be we should. You know, we th- it's not something we want to let slide. You know, if, because we're not having issues. Right. You know, at one point it's it's a point of vulner real vulnerability. So. Yeah. yeah. So, so we could, so we could keep this in our pocket to ask you for something like that when we start budgeting again. But I think Judy had a. Did you have a comment? I just have a question. Um, you know, when we have our financial uh, accounting Audit. audited, it's a, a separate um, independent group that does that. And I don't know if it's more traditional to have um, a separate group do that than RB Tech. So it's just a question in my mind. Yeah. Yep. It's a perfectly fair question, um, and the short answer is that uh, we have seen it both ways. We've been the auditors, um, and we've been uh, more often than not we're the auditors. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we also have done a number of audits of our own work. Um, so uh, we we had a security architect on staff, um, and that was his gig. And he was basically, he operated as a, effectively as a contractor, even though he was an employee, he was totally independent. Um, he, he has since moved out to California, um, couldn't take winter anymore. Um, and I have since gotten my CISSP, which is Certified Internet System Security Professional, or basically a, uh, a, new a credential that says that I know what I'm talking about in security. Um, so we have proper professional oversight. We have very good frameworks that we can do. There is, you know, I, I would not be at all concerned if you brought in another auditor to, um, to do the work and the balance for the town is going to be that we know your network. And so our, our learning curve to audit and assess what's there is going to be shorter. Um, and frankly, we charge less than, than most, um, specialized auditing companies um and uh so there's there's a you know sort of a straight face piece which is you know does it make sense to have rb tech audit their own work are they going to be honest if they find something um you know i will tell you that of course we are um but yeah you know. <laughs> yeah no i hear you because uh, so. i'm i'm remembering something from the league um where we have to make sure that we have um, good security as far as our insurance and stuff goes. So right. I can't rem- I can't remember exactly what it was, but there's something niggling in the back of my mind that we got from the league that you know about making sure that our you know our technology that we have good security. Sure. So here's maybe just to summarize this, I would say. I am 100% confident in the work that we do, and I would not have any hesitation about having another auditor look at the work that we've done and mm-hmm. do their thing. 
Um, that, that said, uh, we would be more than happy to talk to you about what the league is looking for from that insurance and regulatory compliance perspective mm -hmm. and uh, to have a conversation about what, you know, where you are at, you know, what the measures are. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, that may be a really good jumping off point. Yeah. Well, we won't, obviously we can't make that decision tonight, but it's something we should remember and, you know, think about thinking, think about thinking about, I guess. So thank you for explaining all that. Thank um, you, anybody Ruben. else, anybody else on the board have questions? Um, or would, I think is our, I guess we, we should have a motion to renew our contract with RB Tech if that's the board's desire. So moved. Okay, I would second that. Is it a one year contract? Yeah. It's an evergreen. It, it auto renews unless either party announces, you know, we're planning on stepping away. Oh, so. So we don't. Well, so we don't really have to do a motion then. Well, no, but I think it's a really good practice because um, the the next step, Denise, is we should do it ahead of whatever the notice period is. Yeah. Which, Ruben, you're nodding your head. When when would we have done this if we were going to actually get ahead of the notice period? Uh, the convenience or good cause clause is 60 days. Okay. So good. for July 1, is that what we're doing? No, I think it's actually no, May. May. Okay. All right. So, so we would have had to have done it in March. Right. We had talked about putting it on the agenda uh, back in March, but because of what was going on with the election and all of that, Judy asked us to hold off and have this conversation at a later date, and we agreed to that because we felt that pretty good chance we would end up renewing. Yeah. No. But in the but in the, but in the future. Yeah. If we're like. We got that little window in February after the budget's done. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a good, that would be a, I mean, it has the, the process. This is great. And I, I said it earlier and I really appreciate it, I, but it has the most integrity if we're doing it at a point where it's real and we could actually be giving notice instead. So anyway, that's all. It's just, a, it's yeah. a comment, but it's here. I like the idea of having that early Sharon too, like in, in that February window too, because should we need to make some changes if we wanted to increase the contract, gives us a little, gives Ruben time to put something together yeah, and then, you know, for oh. approval. And there is a trigger in place already because Ruben's team is very diligent and they give us plenty of advance notice of when the contract is up for renewal. They actually open a ticket and say, okay, it's time mm -hmm. for us to to meet and talk about this. Yep. Let us know when you want to get together. Yeah. All right, good. So there's a motion on the table and I seconded it. Let's take a vote. Um, Rick? Yes. I'm a yes. Cliff? Aye. Sharon? Aye. And John? Yeah. All right, great. Thank you so much, Ruben. We really appreciate the work that RB Tech does, you are very responsive. Um, you know, your team is very responsive and we really appreciate that. And most of the time I can even understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> we, thank you, Ruben. We do try not to geek out too hard. Yeah, that's appreciated. We, we for, geeking out for, for in the office. For staff meetings, you can talk all the geek you want. <laughs> so I, I don't know if you want to- Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very easy to work with RB Tech and we really appreciate how responsive you are. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And we appreciate the partnership with the town as well. And you might, you can stay on for a moment if you want, yep. in case anybody has any questions. Um, sure. Our next item is we need to purchase a new laptop for our recording secretary. And you gave us a quote, I think it's in the folder. So everybody on the board should have had opportunity to yeah. review it. So I just want to find out from you, Ruben, I, this is RB's recommendation. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little pricey, but there's probably yeah. good reason there's probably good reason for that. Um there's good and bad reasons. Um one, we really like the Lenovo thing <laughs> T series. They've been our standard for years and years and years. 
um, prices on anything to do with mobile anything Wait. right now are absurd. Oh, that's right. The supply and demand must be awful. Yeah, the supply tough. chain is completely blown out. So the, like this was the laptop that um, I actually did this quote. This was the laptop that I could find that was in stock, had plenty of stock um, last week when I heard that, uh, that you had a laptop that was failing. Um, the stock on that may have changed. Like the 1200 that were in stock at our distributor may well be gone. <laughs> Um, so you, uh, the supply chain is very difficult and it's a little bit of a horse race right now. And same thing, same thing with lawnmowers. I heard it's lawnmowers. It's, you know, it's, it's everything it's wood <laughs> plywood yeah. CDX yeah. is $50 a sheet and it's usually 18. Like there's just some, this fortunately it hasn't gotten hit as hard. What we're running into is not so much that the prices have spiked absurdly, although they're up like, I don't know, probably 15% or so. Um, but the supply problem is a real problem where sometimes the machines, just, they're gone and we, we can't get anything for a couple few weeks or there have been a couple of times when it was like four weeks that we couldn't get a machine. Wow. That in mind, I mean, if, if this is an issue, do, I mean, is there a way would we want to just authorize, I mean, authorize you to purchase a machine? So you didn't have to wait for two weeks or a week to get authorization. It was a, if the supply is that tight, uh, would we, I mean, I put this out to the board, would we want to authorize him up to a certain price, you know, to yeah. find a comparable machine that he judged to be? So. So Rick, I can answer that for you. There's actually a little asterisk in all of the quotes that says, if we can't get this, we're gonna substitute something in that's, um, that's price comparable. If we can't get something price comparable, then we'll let you know. Okay, that's fine, that's okay. fine. Yeah, that's- Price and system, right? I mean, you're looking- We're, we're, we're doing gonna get, our best. We're not gonna get a lemon. We're gonna get the something asterisk in there. Yep. Yeah, what we'd like to do is get a machine that you think is best suited to our need, not have to of course. sacrifice that away. If we we few, won't sell dollars. something that doesn't do what you need it to do. So if, okay. if I can't find something that fulfills what Katie needs, then I'm going to come back and say, look, I, uh, you know, what's in stock is, is 200 bucks more. Right. Uh, I hope that won't be the case. <laughs> So, um, and Brittany works really hard to to do that juggling, um, to you know find the right thing that's close enough that it's. Okay. I guess I'm looking for a way so that we don't have to wait two weeks to come back to the board again for approval. I'm wondering, and this is a question for the select board: Should we authorize up to maybe twenty five hundred? Um, hopefully, it won't come to that. Uh, you know, rather than so that there's a little wiggle room for the team to find something. Yeah, I mean, I personally would recommend that. And then we can ask Ruben to come back if he were to have to, uh, you know, he can, if he were to have to utilize that, come in higher than he thought on an estimate like this, he could just tell us what, give us the the details of why and you know, what we were thankful for. And then, we do that as a matter of course. If we end up having to substitute something, then we'll send over the the delta between the spec sheets and say mm -hmm. this is what you get or you don't get for the difference in the money. Mm -hmm. Right. But what I'm looking for is to see if we want to authorize up to a certain dollar amount so that we don't lose out on waiting for approval for the purchase. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. I would be good with that. So if we went up to like 2,500, maybe. The quote is 2,319 now, right? Yeah. 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 That makes sense. So I would make a motion that we authorize the purchase of a new laptop and installation and all that stuff um, for a price not to exceed $2,500. Second. Is that work for you, Roman? That's fine. 
where okay. you know we're going to do our very best to not go over the original yeah. quote, right? Right. But just in case there's some issues and you got to jump quick, maybe that would make yep. it easier. It gives you a little latitude. Yeah. Yep. Right. So with your approval, then what we're going to do is tomorrow we're going to order the machine, hope okay. that I, the specific SKU that I quoted is in stock, and if it's not, then uh, then Brittany will will go shopping. <laughs> yeah. John has a question. I'm just curious, is that SSD upgradable, Ruben, either now or later? It's a 250, mm -hmm. I was wondering. Mm -hmm. If there was a half terabyte, I, how much that would cost? Or I don't know cost. off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the really frustrating things that's happening with the supply right, line right now is that the drives are no longer just regular two and a half inch drives that you can drop in. A lot of them now are NVMe, and some of them are actually um, soldered right into the motherboard, sort of like the old Mac days, which I detest. I really wish they wouldn't do that. Um, and to answer your question directly, I don't know on this particular okay. machine right. if it's upgradable. Yeah. So everyone's going away. Apple's gone, huh? That's too bad. Yeah. It's awful because, to be blunt, 250 is really borderline just enough for Windows 10. Right. Right. Yeah, you, you don't have a lot of leeway for a, a lot of stuff I mean, on your machine after a couple of years. It's going to be an issue. I if mean, you could that... check that out, Ruben. And I don't I know. Check that out. If you could get a crucial one terabyte and throw it in there or something, that might be a good use of that added uh, money. We probably wouldn't do that preemptively just because it messes with the warranty of the machine. Oh, really? Um, okay. But, um, but, if there's a, a comparable machine that has a little bigger disk, then we'll I'll, I'll look at that. Okay. If, you right. know, if we can find a machine that's got a, a big enough drive, and they're also doing the same thing with memory. Some of the machines come with eight gig, and that's all you get. Right. So Usually is 15 is what those now. So is 2,500 enough? I think we'll we'll be able to make it work. And, okay. Um, uh, well, we'll figure it out. Okay. I, I think I think that's enough padding. That's almost ten percent. We okay. should be able to figure it out. So yeah, so if you can look at sixteen gig of memory and if you yeah. want sixteen gig of memory and a half T or a T, then you're gonna have to. Then you're talking about a different machine because it's probably also gonna come with a Core i seven, not an i five. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, if you want to go that far, then you're probably looking at so. Here's, a, here's maybe a suggestion. Maybe you authorize up to a certain amount for the machine itself, um, because the, the labor we usually, I always quote the labor just so that you have an estimate, but we typically do the labor sort of folded in with your regular monthly stuff. Um, and we don't break the charge for that installation out because we can use you know three quarters of an hour that you have left on your contract or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe what um, maybe you could authorize, you know, up to maybe you authorize up to twenty two or twenty three hundred dollars because I think the machine is seventeen ninety nine. Well, it's already at twenty three with the other add ons. With well, it's twenty three with the installation, which is four oh, okay. and chain five hundred. Okay. So I'm wondering if, uh, and maybe we're straying too far afield of the quote. I, um, so John are you thinking we should do a little I, higher I, I like like Ruben said I think that that machine is undersized the SSD is uh, may, maybe the eight gig of memory is all right but the SSD is too small yeah, yeah. okay with the large photo uh, files we use we use map files and, and I don't know and like you said the new windows it's going to eat up a lot of gigs. So should it, maybe I should withdraw my motion and we well, should. No, well, Ruben was speaker. suggesting that, that we maybe go with uh, approving a machine price at up to and then whatever the labor is, that's a set amount. Separate. Okay. Does that work, Ruben? I, I think I would suggest that because then then uh, what you're what you're really authorizing if I'd be so bold as to have Judy say, this looks okay. 
right? Or or maybe Katie. Sorry. Yeah, the, the machines. <laughs> um, but you know, maybe the select board authorizes somebody to make that decision up to a certain amount. Um, yeah. And that way, that way, you know, there's a clear back and forth between RB Tech and the town, and sure. there's you know, yeah, some clarity there. Can we? Is is it? Cliff, are you the right person to de delegate that to on behalf of the board? Yeah, I can certainly, because I, I see all of these. I'm on the list when the when the quotes come in and whatnot. Judy always yeah. makes sure that I see a okay. copy. So okay. I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. I would propose a friendly amendment to Denise's motion that that amount uh, that we're talking about of 2,500 uh, be for equipment only. Okay. And, and can we, we can we, we add, add a labor contingent to that, or is that going to be under the regular contract like Ruben was talking about, where we cover that with excess time or? or and and that uh, what do we got there, Ruben? Four hours of labor, approximately. Yep. That uh, we would then uh, a lot for at least for minimum four hours of labor, and if there's more than that involved, Ruben will let us know. And can we? Add to that that we we authorize Cliff to um, work with RB Tech to um, determine the best option or the best computer, whatever you want to call it. Sure. Well, I guess I guess I, as a bo one board member, I don't want to see a, a 250 SSD. I'm just going to put it right out there. I think I mean sure. my, I upgraded all my computers to one terabyte and i don't use big map files it's just it's right the sign of the times right now and it's big files and um katie you know is going to be on projects it's what we do and we want her to have all the capacity we don't want her to have to keep coming back sure. yeah, I why I think why we're going to have a hard time finding a machine that comes out of the out of the box with a one T SSD. Well, I, I'm suggesting a half, so, a half, a half. Terabyte. Okay. So I, I agree. I agree. The two fifty is on the low end. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to keep like pushing the price up and up and up because we're feature creep. Um, so if five twelve is good, if you, if you all are good with five twelve, I think we can find what you need in, in the price range that we're talking about. And I may, you know, who knows? It's so all over the map. I may, we may do better. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I don't want to also have this conversation turn into a new feature that turns into a new. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this isn't you driving that. Board. The year we know you're not pushing. This is our own. This is internally based on our own experience. So yeah, yeah we're asking you. So that's good. We appreciate it. All right. So, so are we, so are we, we will do what we can do to stay under the cap and get sort of as feature rich as we can. And is that, all right. That works, thank you. Is, Ruben. The, is the board ready to vote? Yeah. All right, Rick? Yes. I'm a, yeah, I'm a yes, John? I, I don't know what I'm voting on. Katie, can you read the motion back? 2,500 plus. Denise Wheeler made a motion to authorize RB Tech to purchase a laptop with installation at a price not to exceed $2,500. Sharon Wynn Fannin seconded the motion. Because of supply chain issues, drives are no longer <clears throat> laptop card. drives that you can drop in. Some of them are soldered right into the motherboard. John Brabant asked Holland to, sec to check the size of the drive and ability to change it out and expressed his concern that the size was too small. Some of the labor will be folded into the monthly contract. Cliff Emmons proposed a friendly amendment to the motion that the amount of $2,500 be for equipment only and a lot for a minimum of four hours of labor. If there's more than that involved, RB Tech will let the town know. <coughs> the town authorized Cliff, the select board, <clears throat> authorized Cliff Emmons to work with RB Tech to determine the best computer option. And, and authorized. Cliff is, Cliff is right, authorized, with, but he's delegated, we're delegating final decision authority to him. Okay. I think that, I think that did it, say, it said authorized right in there. The select board authorized final decision authority to Cliff Emmons to work with RB Tech on the best computer option. 
the, the one thing I, I do question in that was the, you know, we, we, we authorized the $2,500 up to, or for equipment only. And then I want to make sure, I mean, you, the original conversation was around uh, Ruben rolling that into our regular expenses where we were under budget in some areas for under regular contract. But well, we're not doing that, are we? I thought we were authorizing up to four hours of. Yeah, that's what it said in the motion. Okay, I mean, I'm just clarifying. I, I heard yep. it differently, I guess. Yeah, no, you heard right. Okay. All right, John, are you ready to vote? Yeah, I said yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Hi. Cliff? Hi. All right, thank you. Great discussion. Thank, thank you, you very Ruben. much. Thanks, yeah. Ruben. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks, Ruben. All good right. Night. Good night. Yeah, good night we'll all. talk to you soon. You, too. You, can right. stay, you can stay if you find it really exciting. <laughs> you know, I do love me a good meeting, but I've had a few already today. So I bet you have. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna peel off, but okay. You know that if you ever have questions, you can always give me a shout. Yeah, that's what's good great night. about a, that's what's great about a local company, Ruben. Right. It is. All right, all. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Um. All right, town hall. Friends of town hall is who is. Carol, are you the spokesperson tonight for Friends of Town Hall? Um, yeah, I'm here, and so is David Sheets, and it looks like Barbara has joined oh, us as well. Oh, there's David. Oh, it says Linda, but it sort of looks like David. Right. I know. Linda has changed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now it's David. <laughs> it's, it's me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And Barbara, you're here for Town Hall? Yes, indeed. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So first of all, thank you for squeezing us into this meeting. We, um, we are working on a grant proposal for another cultural facilities grant um, through the Vermont Council on the Arts and are um, on a deadline of June 7th to submit the proposal. And unlike the last cultural facilities grant, which the town actually authored um, the, the, the application for, this one would be submitted by the um, friends of the Callis Town Hall. So an, a really critical piece of that grant process is getting the support of the town who owns the building um, for, for that grant proposal. So we wanted to just have a preliminary conversation to uh, hopefully all get on the same page with that. Um, what we are looking for is a $30,000 cultural facilities grant, um, which is a matching grant. So it would, would have to be matched by, by our own funds, 50% of which can be in kind work. Um, and the project that we are looking at is to get the second floor of town hall outfitted as theater performance, um, public space, you know, appropriate for the, the anticipated uses of the building. And that includes um, light, uh, electrical work to support lighting and sound design, purchasing and installation. Um, a perch, as I understand it, and I, I am going to be getting up to speed with the real details of, of the project um, over the next couple of weeks, but a perch for um, that equipment to actually reside in uh, over the front door of the building, which was part of the original drawings um, that John McCullough did. Um, darkening, room darkening panels or curtains so that uh, the, the space can be darkened for um, uses as needed. And then um, uh, theater curtains and rigging for, for the stage. So it's basically a package of, of, um, of work that, that, that really enables that space to be um, used as a, as a theater and performance venue. And um, David, do you want to jump in with anything? Or Barbara? Or Cliff, actually, you too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, these are the things in particular that the theater people in the midst of our group uh, feel are the highest priorities in order to make the upstairs usable as um, a new cultural center. So that, of course, is the heart of what this grant program is all about. Um, and many of the recipients of these grants often are town halls uh, like ours, 
that don't have necessarily a great history as cultural centers, but are very much in the mode of trying to uh, improve themselves to the extent that they can be used effectively for performances. So um, we stand a very good chance, in my opinion, uh, but we do need very much the support of the town through their elected officials. Um, that is a really important ingredient for our ability to have a successful grant application. And didn't we get the, David, didn't we get the elevator through the cultural facilities grant? We did. Okay. ADA is another major driver of this grant program. So uh, we took care of most of the ADA uh, stuff, including the restrooms, I believe, um, with, uh, with funds from the grant that Donna Fitch wrote on behalf of the committee and the town a few years ago. This year, I think, is the first year we are now eligible again to go back to the trough, so to speak. Right. So to speak. So to speak. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Mm -hmm. So David, David, Carol, uh, Cliff, and Barbara, how much of what you described, the, the curtains, the rigging, the window darkening, how much of that comes and goes and is kind of tucked away when it's not in use and how much of it changes the, the ongoing look, feel, aesthetic of the space on a, you know, on a regular Wednesday morning? Um, I, d I don't think it... I mean, it will change the upstairs look, but I think it will be done in a, uh, I very much hope myself, Sharon, <laughs> in an aesthetically pleasing way. Um, so we want to retain the historic character of the hall itself very much. So uh, the lighting would be up near the ceiling. Um, we, the, the drapes, I, I would assume that what the theater people call darkening um, would be done uh, with drapery around the windows that could be opened and closed as needed. Um, are, they, are they drapery or are they more like a roller? I've put in darkening shades before and they actually retract. They're, they're not really visible when they're right retracted they roll right. down like a sure so. so it could be shades as well they're very large windows so yeah, they are uh, the yeah, performance huge. of a roller shade might be a little challenging yeah, yeah. Uh, for windows that large but um that this is all frankly defining this by June 7th is something we're going to need to do. So Carol has already set in motion a bunch of the theater folks who are working on the uh, details uh, in the next month so that we can submit actual plans for this that are much more fleshed out than they are right now. Including a budget, of course. Including a budget and including a couple quotes. The, the program would like us to come back with more than one quote for uh, what is included in the grant budget. Estimates, right. Estimates, right. Are you looking at like creating a stage area with legs, like velour legs, hanging on battens or things like that with a header? cloth so they would hang or I'm just trying to envision how that you know for if you're creating a stage area so you have an off stage wing is that what you're thinking about well yeah. the stage is there okay. that, that was part of the project that was accomplished yeah. already so the stage has been built 
Um, what I think will dress the stage would be some kind of uh, legs and other uh, yeah. theater curtains that would be on either side. Sure, banks with three so they, or four. So they could be pulled open and when it's not in use and then you would close them when it's in use. Is that the idea? That's correct. Or usually the legs are different. They they're not they're stationary. No. They they block sight lines. And they yeah, could so. be brought <laughs> down. For example, the legs right. would not have to be up all the time. Yes. Right. I I I'm not as clear myself, frankly, as the theater people in our group may be about their desire to have a traditional proscenium stage situation in the theater um mm -hmm. to what extent we want that i think that's still an open question but we're obviously going to be having those conversations um as early as tomorrow when we have another mm -hmm. meeting of the group trying to uh define exactly what the priorities are how to craft the budget and how to put together a package that will be successful. Mm. Any more questions from the board? John, do you have any questions, comments? No. Okay, Cliff, do you want to call up the letter? I think everybody's probably had a chance to look at it, but. This is a letter of support. It's different than ECCT, right? We don't have to, the board isn't actually the applicant or the, the, the town, it's the friends. Correct. Okay. I thought the letter, the letter looked fine. As yeah. far as I was concerned. Yeah, me too. And Okay. Anything else from the board on this or from the group friends? I'm happy to make the motion that we um, accept and sign the letter of support for the grant application. I'll second. Okay, would you, who would you like to authorize to sign it on behalf of the board? Oh, I'll sign it. Okay. All right. So David, I can just print it out, sign it and scan it right on back to you guys. Yep. Yes. And if you could send it in particular to Carol, she's yeah, that'd be she's great. the leader of the effort here. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Great. Thank all you, right. Carol and David. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you Great. very much. Good wait, use of that. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got a vote. We got a we vote. Got a vote. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh. All right, Rick. Yes. I'm an I. Sharon? Aye. Cliff? I have to abstain. Okay. And John? Yes. All right. Very good. Done deal. Thank you all. Let us Thank know you. how it goes. We sure will. Yeah. Thank you so Exciting. much. Thank you very much. And next Thank up you. is the water filtration system. I don't know if any of the friends are interested in that discussion, but you're welcome to join us. <laughs> oh, Ruby, you can't <laughs> type. Sorry. All right, um, Cliff, do you want to give us a go over of this quote and the reasoning? I, I did look at it. Yep. So uh, just so everyone's got the background here, uh, much as we needed to install a water treatment system at the town office because of iron content in the water and the hardness of the water, uh, the, the same need exists. Uh, for the water at the the town hall, it um, it does have an odor to it. Um, that's probably due to the iron content and the mineral content. It will tend to be harder on the pipes. We'll get shorter life out of the plumbing um, if we don't do this. Um, 
It was something that was not done at the time that the restoration efforts were being put on because the, they were looking for ways to save money any way possible. However, to protect our investment uh, going forward, uh, the proposal is that, is that we put something in. So uh, we got a couple of quotes and I will um, pull up a comparison so people can see how these uh, quotes compare and uh, to the best of my ability, answer any questions that you might have and uh, hoping that we can decide how we wanna move forward from here. So before I pull that up, maybe there's some other questions people have. Hearing none, okay. So I, as we did when we looked at the RFP for painting the town hall, I took our criteria, put it into an Excel file and using a scale of one to five, uh, rated each of the quotes based upon um, the criteria that we have in our policy for bid selection. Right off the bat, you'll see that there is a um, difference in pricing and the reason for that is clear water filtration did include water softening in their quote, um, Onion River did not. However, um, if they included it in their quote, it would add roughly with labor and materials, uh, another $1,800 to their price. So really uh, we are comparing apples to apples if we look at the full system of um, water filtration or water treatment for the iron content as well as softening to reduce the hardness of the water. And remind me Cliff, right now we use Clearwater at the town office, correct? Clearwater is who serves the town office and we'll get into that in a minute here. Okay. So just walking everyone through the criteria, um, even if we add in, factor in uh, water softening to the Onion River quote, they still would end up being probably 150 to 200 dollars less than the clear water filtration system so that's why you see the rankings here five being the top score one being the lowest score just so you remember the scale here timeliness um we feel that both could get this system installed in a relatively short order um in the experience column we talk about let's see if i can pull that up we talk about the bidder's experience and reputation, including past performance for the town. So slight edge there for clear water filtration since they're already doing the same service for us at the town office. Uh, goods and services, uh, clear water with their quote provided additional information on the specifics of the equipment that they were going to install. Um, Onion Rivers quote, they listed in the quote the equipment they were gonna install, but they didn't provide any uh, collateral materials that discuss that. So a slight edge consequently went to clear water filtration system there. For insurance and bonding and whatnot, both of the contractors have all of the requisite bonding and insurance in place. So they're even there. Financial responsibility, a slight edge for Onion River because we don't have to pay them until the system is installed. For clear water, they would want half of the money upfront and then balance upon completion of the job. Future support. This one's a little difficult um, to quantify. Um, slight edge though for clear water filtration for two factors. One, they've been doing it a little longer. They've been at it for 40 years. Um, Onion River has been around uh, almost the same amount of time, but they've only been doing these treatment systems for about 20 years. And it was also noteworthy that clear water filtration, these water treatment systems is what they do. That's all they do. Onion River as their name would indicate, actually doing wells and springs, and this is a sideline for them. Uh, capability um, talks about the ability to complete the task, really um, only could give a slight edge to clear water filtration there because we know that they've done it. And coming back to the fact that this is their core competency. Um, finally, in other, the only factors to consider there is it would be my recommendation that we go with the clear water filtration quote over the Onion River. And this then is a summary that just averages out all of these scores and we see a slight advantage going to clear water filtration. Hey, Cliff. Yeah. 
Thanks for filtering all this information. Yeah. <laughs> yuck, 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 get it? Yeah, um, that's good. Boy, that was bad. <laughs> Cliff, I yeah. really, no, I really appreciate that you that you sifted, yeah. went through everything, and and you know brought it right to let us know you met, you looked at it, all the criteria, and um, landing it with a recommendation. Thank you. You're welcome, yeah. John. Um, so this system would do all the water, the water going to the bathroom as well as the kitchen, or it would just be going to the no, it's everything. Okay. Everything. You'd want it in all the, if it's iron, removing iron, and you'd want yep. everything that's, all your plumbing. Where the water comes into the building, this goes in line. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that will, that will save on the fixtures and stuff in the bathrooms. Yeah, also yeah. A, avoid hard water stains in the toilet because we're not using them all the time. So the water sits there. Those minerals would create nasty stains over time. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you yeah. Did a, you did filter, a great... filter screens build up all that stuff yeah. yep. you, did a great, you did a great job on the presentation thank you very much mm -hmm. you're welcome thank you um do you have a recommendation yeah i recommend that we go with the clear water filtration quote okay all right is there any other questions or discussion on this what what where would this money come from purchases what since we have um, spent all the money in the town hall fund it would have to come from the general fund okay and i would recommend that we not wait for the new fiscal year to start that we go ahead and get it done sooner rather than later because once we go back into business and the town hall is being used again that's when the water is going to start running yeah right so um are you making a motion to I would move that we uh, move uh, approve uh, the onion or the clear water filtration water. system quote. And in, for an installation to begin as soon as they can get it on their schedule. Yep. Okay, I'll second that. Any further discussion or questions? All right, are you ready to vote, Rick? Hi. I'm an I, Sharon. Sharon. Hi. Okay. <coughs> All right, Cliff. Hi. John. Yes. Very good. Great. Anything else on town hall? Where would the system be located? In like the utility room or in the utility room? Yeah. Okay. Just like it is at the town office. Okay. Great. Thank you for your work on this. Appreciate it. No, you're welcome. All right. And so there's nothing else on town hall, Cliff or Barbara? Nothing okay. right now. All right. Very good. So we are at 919. And I would like to suggest that we have a special meeting on May 3rd at 7 to go into executive session to talk about contracts, personnel issues. And um, first I would put on the agenda to get caught up on approving minutes and then go into executive session. Today, um, Denise, I'm not gonna be there. I, I can't have select board meetings every week. I'm just not doing this. Okay. It's, this is just, it's really getting to me. I mean, it, okay. it used to be budget season, we would do this. And then it would end in January. Now it's every single week. And, you know, I wasn't here for four months. And, uh, but you know, uh, this every week thing, I'm just gonna go to every other meeting if we're gonna have them every week. I'm just gonna be right out there. Okay, we're trying to get things wrapped up as close to nine as we can without going not, on forever. I'm not, be here. I'm not gonna be here. You guys can have your meeting. I'm just not doing it anymore. Okay, I'm just, tell I'm just telling you why. I understand, and there's always a reason uh, to keep, you know, every time someone creates a shit show in town, um, it we have to like respond and have meetings. And I understand, but you know, we I feel like we're being driven by everybody else's urgencies and everybody's lack of concern and sentiment. And uh, I'm just, I'm losing my patience after 15 years of this. And actually, this is a recent thing, the last two years or year. 
I, I don't want, I'm not agreeing to this. Um, okay, what would the rest of the board like to do? Uh, what's the time sensitivity on this particular item? The contract item? Yeah. Okay. Is that, um, it, I mean, I. What contract? Fire department. Well, the, uh, I do, I do think we have, I mean, John, I, I, I agree. And yet, I mean, we have, we have, we, A, we have five people on the board. So when one of us is feeling done, then, then it's okay. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, we do, there is urgency on some of these things, partly because they've hung out, you know, things hang out there for too long when we, and the, we just need to, we need to keep working until we get it done. Um, the other thing, the other thing is that the more, you know, we haven't finished our organizational work yet. <laughs> so case in point of how quickly we get away from things, um, and, you know, over time, I think when we've done that and we're, we, I love that we are recognizing opportunities to deal when we're, when we're doing even more of that, getting more work done outside of the meetings, um, bringing it in nice and crisp, like Cliff did tonight, we're, we're going to get there to having shorter meetings and fewer meetings, but we're just not, I feel like we're just not there yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to be there next week. Absolutely. And I'm also fully respectful of people who feel like they just can't right now. Yeah. I agree. I agree with Sharon. I'm, I'm, I'll be there, but it'd be nice to, you know, not to have to do that all the time, but we're working toward that. So, right. I mean, that's our end goal. Yeah. So it's perfectly understandable, John. So wait, so this is the joint meeting? No, it's our, we gave notice that right. we wanted to review the contract. Right. And there's some time sensitivity there to get this, our concerns and out, you know, list our concerns and get them out there because then we're going to have to meet jointly with East Montpelier Select Board to present our issue and how we might resolve it. And then, so that's that's so, one of the so, issues. So I know we're not going to get the details in, in the public meeting here, but are the concerns so numerous and so broad? That there is a meeting that we just can't meet before we meet with the East Montpelier Select Board. <laughs> I understand. I think there was one no. issue that yeah, was a yeah. consequence, but yeah. maybe I'm wrong. I think we, when we spoke last meeting, we talked about doing our due diligence um, in reviewing the contract, which we haven't done in detail in five years. Right. So to do our due diligence, I think we need to at least run through it we know what our main concern is so that's the reason in part to meet okay cliff yeah um it is something we've agreed that we need to look at um as an alternative and just well let me back up a little as far as meeting next week i think i'll be able to do it but i do have something else that I'm uh, involved with where I may not be able to make that meeting, but I should be able to, but just a heads up there. Okay. Um, as an alternative though, could we maybe <coughs> sign this to one or two members of the board, probably two, it makes sense, uh, review and then come back to the board with the recommendations. This is what we should be talking about. Yeah, we could do that. Um... I think, Sharon, what about you and I taking a look at that? Yep. I mean, Denise and I have a meeting already, um, but yeah, we can, we, we can do that. And then what are we trying to do? Just jam it into a half hour that's a, a seven and nine <coughs> window. <coughs> if, that's, if that's the case, though, guys, watch your email because Denise and I are going to be sending you several documents because, uh, you know, we have some right. personnel stuff Denise and I are working on. Um, there will be this contract issue. 
and there may be a couple of other issues. I, I'm a big believer and we can do, you know, without, without discussion, but with thoughtful review um, ahead of time, we can get a lot done just by look by careful looking at your drafts that, that are coming Good. through. Yeah, uh, yeah, if everybody can really pay attention to their email and respond, maybe, maybe we meet at six on the 10th instead of meeting next Monday night. Would that work for everybody? Yes, for me. Oh, yeah, no, fun. no, we're going to do it. We're going to meet from 7 to 8.30 and we're going to meet for half an hour in executive session. No, we're not going to. We have a whole bunch of stuff that we need to have on the agenda. If you look at the minutes from the previous meeting, we already agreed that we would meet at 6 on the 10th. Oh, did we? Oh, okay. We did. All right, then. Never mind. I guess I'll have to save my whining. Go have some wine. All right. So we won't meet on the third and i think we all have our homework assignments um are you ready to adjourn so okay. okay is that a second sharon yes a second i really love this guys we, we know the thing we went longest on tonight the laptop yeah so I know. Who would have thought, can, right? We can get no, we can get so much better at that. So good job, everybody. Yay. We're making progress, right? Yeah, no, we're making <laughs> exactly. great progress. I really appreciate everybody pitching in. It makes a big difference. Uh, All right. So would you like to vote to adjourn, Rick? Aye. I'm an I. Sharon. Aye. Cliff. Aye. And John. Yes. And Katie, you're gonna get a brand new laptop. Are you excited? Yay, I feel terrible asking for it, but I'm like, it's not good when I can't see you guys. I just keep typing and hope that something's happening. That's, <laughs> that's, that's why I didn't want you being the one who agrees. I thought, Katie, that Katie, she's going to say, no, I don't need I'll be like, pencil and paper. I'll just, <laughs> no, no, we want you to have only the best. Did you ever learn, did you ever learn shorthand? I used to have, I used to know shorthand, but I don't anymore. I forgot it all. I didn't, no. Yeah, okay. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, Cliff. Yeah. I'll, I'll, Cliff, I'll come by probably hey. midday ish, pick up the board orders. John, I'll good. see you yep. three tomorrow. Yeah. So, see you. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Good night. I'll see you. See you, Cliff.